Ralph, it's great to have you back on the show. Um, I do want to start here with a cyber threat. I mean, it's something I realize power grids as critical infrastructure are always kind of in focus when we talk about something like this. But how are you weighing those possibilities now as we see this conflict play out in Eastern Europe and are the risks elevated? Well, thanks for having me here. And of course, uh, I have to begin by just saying my thoughts and prayers are with all the folks in Ukraine and the humanitarian crisis that they're experiencing right now and hope for a speedy resolution of it. Uh, it won't shock you if I don't go into detail on the cyber protections we're putting in place for obvious reasons. But no one company can withstand a nation state. So we work together with our government partners, with our partners in the industry, to make sure we don't have a single point of failure, to make sure the system has multiple levels of redundancy. Obviously, at this point in time, we have a heightened state of alert on any anomalies that we see in our systems, both our operating systems and our enterprise systems. Uh, we make sure those operating systems are air-gapped from our enterprise systems uh, so that we can separate them from the Internet to the greatest extent possible. Uh, we share people, we share information, we, we share parts, uh, should there be challenges in that regard. But I think it's best probably to not go into any further detail than that in terms of the protections that we've uh, tried to build into the system. Understood. But just in terms of anomalies, have you seen any? In, or, or more than usual, I should say, in recent weeks? No, no, we haven't, actually. Uh, what has happened, though, is that our antenna are raised, so uh, more operational glitches and system uh, changes have been raised to senior management's attention, but upon digging into them, we saw that they were uh, not cyber-related. So our, our heightened awareness is bringing more issues to the forefront, but as we explore those issues, we don't see any uh, anomalous reasons for them happening. And let's talk about the... Uh, energy picture in general and, and how it impacts um, a utility such as PSEG as well. I mean, there's a lot of focus right now on Europe and sort of where Europe gets its energy from, different types of energy, different types of electricity generation from. Uh, what does that mix look like within your company and how are you thinking about that, I guess, in terms of this broader conversation and as we do see more traditional energy prices spike? Sure. You know, I, of course, this is a horrible situation in Eastern Europe, but, but I must tell you, it gives great uh, support to the vision that we've embraced, the strategy we've adopted. You know, the United States learned some lessons back in the 70s from being overly reliant on nations that have less than our best interests at heart. So we've made a major emphasis of, number one, using less energy. Uh, that actually, uh, no one wakes up in the morning saying, I want to use a kilowatt hour or BTU. So let's help our customers use less energy and still accomplish the things we want to accomplish, of course. We're not talking about, about diminishing economic activity or lifestyles. And then the other motivation we've had past energy security has, of course, been climate change. So we've been active on preserving our nuclear pl plants, uh, building offshore wind, and trying to just decarbonize the electric supply in general. And then, of course, recognizing that climate change is upon us in many regards. Uh, we've been fortifying the grid to make it more resilient than ever before. And we've been doing all of that with a notion to shifting demographics and environmental justice. And I think that th that mm. view of the future, using less, being more reliable and uh, being cleaner is something that will serve us well as we see gas prices spike up in Eastern Europe and, and probably go up here in the U.S. as well.